This is the flag of Indian independence. Behold, it is born. It has been made sacred by the blood of young Indians who sacrifice their lives. I call upon you, gentlemen, to rise and salute this flag of Indian independence. In the name of this flag, I appeal to lovers of freedom all over the world to cooperate with this flag in freeing one-fifth of the human race. This fiery speech came from a frail young lady, Madame Kama, as she unfurled this flag in the distant city of Stuttgart, Germany. The year was 1907 and a thousand representatives from all over the world were attending the International Socialist Conference. India was still 40 years away from independence and the world was yet oblivious to the fact that thousands of its young men were laying down their lives for the sake of freedom. For in those days, treason was the greatest crime for an Indian, the common punishment for which was no less than a six-year prison sentence in the Andaman Islands. This particular flag was designed by the well-known freedom fighter Veer Vinayak Damodar Savarkar. The red band at the bottom represented strength, the saffron, victory, and the green band at the top stood for boldness and enthusiasm. The eight lotuses at the top represented the eight provinces of British India, and the sun and the moon indicated the Hindu and the Muslim faiths. The saffron band in the center contained two words from Bankim Chandra Chatterjee's famous Ode to the Motherland inscribed in the Devanagari script. It said, Vande Mataram, I salute thee, mother. Back in India, this flag had already been hoisted for the first time on the 7th of August 1906 at Kolkata's Parsi Bagan Square. Narendranath Sain and Surendranath Banerjee had spearheaded this meeting held to protest against the partitioning of Bengal. As history would bear witness, though India did have flags and banners representing the various dynasties, communities and kingdoms, there had never been a time when the entire expanse of the country had been united under one common flag. The uprising of 1857 was probably the first time that the flag of the Mughal dynasty was hoisted as a universal symbol of rising Indian nationalism. The common song that was sung by the mutineers and soldiers as they rallied under this flag was Hindu Musalman Sikh Hamara Bhai Bhai Pyara Ye Hai Jhanda Azadi Ka Ise Salam Hamara 23rd April 1917 Bal Gangadhar Tilak had established the Home Rule League in Mumbai. Six months later, Annie Besant set up another chapter in Chennai. The Home Rule movement spread rapidly and broke fresh ground even in smaller districts and towns that had until that time little or no political consciousness. The flag that they jointly designed had five red and four green stripes arranged horizontally in an alternate fashion. The seven stars stood for the Saptarishi or the constellation of the seven sages sacred to the Hindus and the crescent moon and star symbol represented the Muslim faith. The upper left portion had the Union Jack. At the Congress session of 1917 that met in Kolkata under her presidentship, Annie Besant is supposed to have hoisted it for the first time and saluted it as a symbol of India's freedom. From then on, it became a regular feature of Indian resistance at meetings and marches. It was around this time that another celebrity was to emerge on India's political horizon and be brought to the forefront of the Indian nationalist movement. It was Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, the father of the nation, also known as the Mahatma. The flag that he popularized had the same green, white and red colors, but for the first time, the Charkha, the humble spinning wheel, made its appearance. 
a symbol of dignity and self-sufficiency in the face of the foreign-made goods that were forced upon the Indian population. It was instantly adopted by the masses who fondly referred to it in a variety of ways. Gandhi Baba's flag, the flag of freedom, the flag of free Hindustan and so on. The Charkha flag of the Indian National Congress was hoisted for the first time in 1921 at its annual session in Ahmedabad. Even in the absence of any official sanction, its popularity had grown by leaps and bounds for no other symbol reflected the aspirations of the people as the Charkha flag. It was indeed an emotional moment when Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru hoisted it on the 29th of December 1929 on the banks of the river Ravi at yet another session of the INC. It was under the shadow of this flag that several momentous episodes in the history of India's freedom movement took place, including the famous Salt March of Dandi, the non-cooperation movement and the bonfires of foreign-made goods. Although the flag had gained in popularity over the years, various leaders and religious groups felt that they did not want the Indian flag to represent particular communities. So, in 1931, the Congress set up a seven-member committee to look into the matter. They recommended that the colours should represent ideas instead of religions. And thus, the saffron band at the top came to stand for renunciation and objectivity. The green at the bottom represented fertility and abundance. The charkha was preserved in this flag and was printed in blue on the white band in the centre that stood for the light that showed the path to truth and peace. On its recommendation, the 31st of August came to be henceforth celebrated as the National Flag Day. And so dawned that glorious day of India's independence, the 15th of August 1947. It was the day of the culmination of the hopes and dreams and the long journey of the Tiranga, India's tricolored flag as it presided proudly over the celebrations at Delhi's Red Fort in the presence of the first Prime Minister of Free India, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. From the lofty heights of Kashmir to the golden sands of Kanyakumari, from the coastline of Kutch to the hills of Arunachal, it fluttered joyfully in the azure skies. One nation, one flag, at last. It had the same saffron, white and green colours that stood for renunciation, truth and abundance. But in the centre of the flag, the spinning wheel was replaced by the wheel of Dharma, the well-known symbol of Emperor Ashoka, one of the greatest kings of ancient India from the 4th century Mauryan dynasty. It stood as an unfailing symbol of truth, faithfulness to one's duty and the dynamism of motion and constant change. It echoed the words of the famous freedom fighter and poetess Mrs. Sarojini Naidu. Under this flag, there is no difference between a prince and a peasant, between the rich and the poor, between man and woman. I bid every Indian to rise and salute this flag. Jai Hind.